want to especially welcome you all to this week's edition of uh, Cloud of Witnesses. I want to appreciate God for uh, for your lives. Bless God for his preservation. And I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to listen to this uh, glorious uh, revelation the Lord is making available to us. Cloud of Witnesses has been the theme for, of consideration since the year began. And uh, in the last three months, in the last three months, we have learned uh, important lessons from the lives of the authors of great and highly inspiring hymns. You know, we dedicated the first quarter of the year to learning faith and life lessons from uh, authors of great uh, hymns of old. And the Lord has really, really blessed our hearts in these uh, last three months. He has given us wonderful opportunities to learn from the lives of these uh, authors of these great hymns. And I believe their stories are worth a reflection as we run this Christian race, you know. The, uh, the Bible says we should run with patience the race that is set before us. And of course, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. So it's important to not forget the stories of these hymn writers, uh, their story, the stories that gave birth to the, hymn that, uh, to the hymns that now bless us, even in our own generation. Some of them have been written several years ago, many, many years ago, for us, as a matter of fact. And the, they are still relevant. They are still blessing us. They are still inspiring us. It's very important we don't forget. We take our time to reflect, um, to reflect on their stories and how they came about. All these themes. It's also important we reflect about the conditions they were in when they give back to this, uh, when they wrote all these themes, so that when we face similar conditions or probably we are facing our own unique conditions, we don't want to give up. We don't want to be discouraged. Some of them wrote uh, those themes under terrible situations, under situations of tragedy, losses, handicap situations, all manners of uh, terrible situations. Some, uh, some why they were sick, why they were suffering. You know, so no matter what is happening to us now, whether it is a similar experience or not, or probably unique experiences, we need to understand that God is faithful in all generations. If they could see the faithfulness of God in their own condition and they wrote hymns to the glory and praise of God, the hymns that are still blessing us now, it's very important that we also uh, look away from whatever we are passing through and look towards God's faithfulness and God's goodness in His and do and do something glorious for the praise of his holy name and probably something that can even bless generations that are coming after us so it's very important we uh don't forget and we you know take our time to do some reflection even as we run our own christian race so starting from this week having completed the hymn session uh, starting from this week, we'll be learning important faith and life lessons from the 42 characters mentioned in Hebrews 11. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, there are about, there are 42 chapters, I mean 42 characters mentioned in Hebrews 11. And uh, for this part, we are going to be learning some faith and life lessons from them. For those who are not familiar with Hebrews 11, like I mentioned in the introduction when we started this uh, theme of Cloud of Witnesses, that's, uh, that's the chapter dedicated to faith practitioners, those who practice faith at one point or the other. So Hebrews 11 is considered a, like all, uh, all of fame for faith, faith practitioners. So there are about 42 characters mentioned there and uh, we have dedicated the remaining part of this uh, year to learning faith and life lessons from these characters. We're going to be exploring the lives of the characters and we're going to be learning some important lessons still under the theme of cloud of witnesses. And for this part, we'll be using the New International Version of the Bible as a primary text. We may do some cross-referencing, but we're going to be using New International Version of the Bible, NIV, as our primary text. I pray the Lord will bless us even as we open our hearts to receive from Him this very moment in the name of Jesus. So the very first character we'll be considering this week is God, G-O-D. If you look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, Hebrews 11 verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Hebrews 11.3, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. So the very first character mentioned in this Hebrews chapter 11 is God, God himself. 
and we're going to be learning from God. And somebody is wondering, if we're going to be learning from God, how can we contain that in just one episode? Well, it's impossible. You are very correct. There's no way. Eternity is too short to learn all you can learn about God. But we're going to try as much as possible to learn some things about Him within the context of this Hebrews 11 uh, verse 3. That will help us to you know, get some get some lessons uh, in this episode so that we don't spend the remaining part of the year just learning about God because God is everywhere. God is big. God is multi-dimensional. He's multi-faceted. There's, there's no way you can exhaust uh, any kind of lesson. So we're going to be looking at, we're going to be learning from God, G-O-D, God, from Hebrews 11.3. And the very first thing that comes to mind from this verse 3 is God is a faith God. God is a God of faith. Even God practices faith. He does. If you look at that verse 3 very well, it he says, He brings what can be seen out of what cannot be seen. He says, so that what was made, what, what is seen was not made out of what was visible. God is a faith God. He brings what can be seen out of what cannot be seen. That makes him a faith practitioner himself. Because if you, if God is not a faith God, it would be very unfair for him to expect us to exercise faith. You are not a faith God. Why then do you want, why do you want us to be practitioners of faith? Why should we exercise faith when you yourself, you are not a faith God? So he's a faith God. God is a God of faith. If you look at Genesis chapter 1, God had a desire. God had a desire according to Genesis chapter 1. He wanted to create a beautiful universe. He wanted to create a wonderful universe. He wanted to give an expression. He wanted to. He wanted something to come out, something he could relay with. All right. He wanted to create a beautiful universe, glorious. You know, he, but everything around him made it look impossible. He had a desire. His plan was to create a beautiful universe, but everything around him made it look impossible. There was darkness, there was chaos, there was formlessness, there was voidness, there was emptiness. Everything just looked as everything made it look impossible for a universe to be created. Everything, everything was empty, void, nothingness, if you like. There was nothing, darkness, chaos, nothing was in order, shapelessness. That's all, that's all God could see around him. And yet he had a desire to create a universe. But you know the good thing about God? He was not discouraged by those present situations. God was not discouraged by those present situations at all. He, was, he, knew, he acknowledged that there was darkness. He acknowledged that there was chaos. He acknowledged that there was voidness, emptiness. But he never got discouraged by those present situations at all. He did not. What did he do? He simply called out what he wanted and what he wanted manifested. He looked beyond what was not working and he called forth what he wanted and what he wanted manifested. He saw his desire fulfilled despite contrary circumstances. You know, God was looking at darkness and I said, let there be light. Did you notice he didn't say darkness disappear? He didn't even talk to darkness. He didn't say darkness, I rebuke you. No, he didn't have that time. He looked at darkness. He looked at himself. What do I want? I want light so that I can continue my creation. And he spoke, let there be light. And there was light. And when light came, darkness had to go. So God looked at what he wanted. I mean, he, he looked at the situation and he called what he wanted. And what he wanted manifested. He saw his desire fulfilled despite contrary circumstances. That verse 3 of Hebrews 11 says, The universe was formed at his command, not as his belief, not as he hoped. At his command, he spoke and formation took place. You are not in faith when all you have is desire. Your desires have to be verbalized. You have to speak forth. Faith is expressed through your speech. 
not just through what you think or what you desire. So God had his desire and he opened his mouth and he commanded his desire to manifest and the desire manifested despite clear contrary circumstances. He spoke and formation took place. Now, as God's children created in his image and likeness, we carry the same power. We carry the same power. We are like God. He created us in his image and in his likeness. So we carry the same power. We equally carry the ability to look past contrary circumstances and declare our expectations and they will manifest. Goats don't sound like chickens because they don't belong to the same order of creation. Goats don't sound like chickens because they don't belong to the same order of creation. But as God's children, we are like God. So if God's command brought about formation, guess what our commands can do? It can do the same. Our commands can do the same. In Mark 11, 22 to 23, Mark 11, 22 to 23, Jesus said, those who believe in God, we have whatsoever they say, not whatsoever they think, not whatsoever they desire, they hope. They say, Jesus Christ said, you will, if you believe in God, you will have whatsoever you say. So like God, you can call forth light even when all you are surrounded with is darkness. You can look at darkness and you can call forth light just like your father, like father, like son. It's not a matter of what am I surrounded with. It's a matter of what do I want. <laughs> you see, you, you can be surrounded with anything. It doesn't matter. But what do you want? So you can call forth light just like God even when or you are surrounded with his darkness. You can call forth health when you are surrounded by sicknesses and diseases. You can be in the midst of poverty and still call forth abundance. Poverty can surround you and you can still call forth abundance even right in the midst of your poverty. God, Notice God doesn't bother himself with what is presently happening. It doesn't matter what is presently around what is going on what is happening that's not the problem of god he simply calls forth what he wants to see and what he wants to see is what shows up when god said let there be light what came it was light he called light there was light and the and god saw the light that's what the bible says he said let there be light and there was light and god saw the light he separated it from darkness he saw the light let there be he called it what happened light manifested and he saw it so in the same way whatever you desire you can call it forth regardless of what is contrary and it will manifest because you are made in god's image and your and in his likeness and if you look at that mark 11 again jesus said if you believe in god you believed in god you believe that truly you are in the image of God, you believe in God, you will have whatsoever you say, the same way God had what he said. We understand that the universe was formed at God's command. Can you imagine? Do you know what it means to form? They came together, the galaxies, everything was well arranged. It was formed, formed, clearly designed, you know, shaped just because he gave the command. Do you know how many things can take shape in your life if only you will speak? Do you know how many things can take shape in your business if only you will give the command? Do you know how many things can take shape in your destiny if only you will speak the word? Do you know how many things can take shape in your family if only you will give the command? Instead of lamenting, oh, why is this, why is this darkness all around me? Why is all this chaos? Why all this emptiness? Why all this voidness? God didn't do that. Those things were there. They were not spiritual. They were there. Darkness was clearly there. Really, really. Chaos. No shape. Emptiness. Nothingness. Voidness. But he looked past them and declared what he wanted. And when what he wanted manifested, all those problems evaporated. So you can, you can, you have to start looking beyond. If you want to learn anything from God in this episode. 
look beyond your contrary circumstances look beyond whatever is contrary to your expectation look beyond what is contrary to your desire look beyond all the things around you that makes it look impossible for your desires to come to pass look beyond them and start giving the command for your desires to manifest issue the command speak don't just believe speak we having the same spirit of faith i believe and i therefore spoke we also believe and therefore speak you speak the spirit of faith is in speaking when you believe you speak because until you speak until god said let there be light light didn't know he needed to come he didn't know you have two children one is james one is john when you want john to come what do you what who do you call you say john come when you say john come james doesn't come but when you just say come james does not even know if it's the one or john you you want john you call john you want james you call james god wanted light he called light he didn't say let something happen that will look like brightness light let there be light clear and light came so it's very very important that you get specific when it comes to your command what do you want what is your desire look past any contrary circumstances look past all the contrary situations and just call what you want if you call it once it doesn't come keep calling it when moses stood before pharaoh he kept saying let my people go he said it nothing less than 10 times before eventually pharaoh let the people go don't just say after i've called it it didn't work keep calling it keep calling it keep calling it do you really desire it the answer is yes then don't stop don't stop if god commanded and what he commanded came to pass and you believe in god then when you command according to the promise of jesus and based on the fact that you are created in his image and likeness when you command you will also see manifestation that is the faith god that you serve and you can learn that from him that contrary situations should not prevent you from expressing what you desire that's very important learn this from god learn this from god and begin to see your desires manifest it's very important learn this lesson from god himself and you begin to see your desires manifest the grace to learn this and to apply it in every area of your life uh, may that grace come upon you in the mighty name of jesus and i quickly speak over your lives every desire of your heart whatsoever you believe in your heart whatever you have been trusting god for is it fruitfulness is it employment is it marriage whatsoever it is that you desire god to do in your life by the power in the name of jesus by the power that commanded light and light came out of darkness let that same power bring to pass all that you desire let the power bring about the manifestation of all these desires of yours in the mighty name of jesus at the command of god the universe was formed by the authority in the name of jesus let formation come into every aspect of your lives in the mighty name of jesus that's the word of the lord for us for this beautiful week if you want to surrender your life to jesus i will give you the opportunity to do so right away you want to surrender your life to jesus so that you can also believe you can issue decrees you can command and god will honor your command you're going to say lord jesus say lord jesus i am a sinner in need of your salvation please forgive all my sins and save my soul from destruction i confess you as my lord and savior today save me and make me yours forever amen let me pray with you father i would thank you for your word this particular week and thank you so much that you are a faith god yourself lord we've had your word and we have learned beginning from now as we issue commands despite contrary circumstances honor our commands and let there be manifestation in the name of jesus i pray for your children who have surrendered their life to jesus lord accept them in the beloved write their names in the book of life and beginning from now when they also verbalize their desires honor them and let there be manifestation in the name of jesus thank you father for answering our prayers we return all the glory to you in jesus mighty name we have prayed 
Amen.